Well, this week's bushel up, we're just going to continue on down the list of nutrients that are important in crop production. And this week we'll talk about sulfur, um, you know, signal, signal by the S on your soil test report, uh, SO4, um, which is a double negative uh, uh, anion, is the form that the plant will take up. So uh, we want to be real careful uh, with this nutrient. We'll talk about why here in a minute. But um, you'll see a trend here. Uh, most nutrients that we need in our crop are important for uh, protein production. Uh, they either aid in, in that process or they're part of, of the protein themselves. Um, sulfur's no different. Um, it's very important for photosynthesis and chlorophyll production. So uh, typically when we see deficiency, uh, a yellow plant, pale plant, a lot of times uh, we track that back to sulfur because it's so important to chlorophyll production which leads into uh, it being very important with nitrogen fixation in the plant. So uh, sulfur and nitrogen are, are best friends in our corn plants especially. Uh, they work together hand in hand so uh, that's why you see a lot of blends you know AMS 210024. Uh, you look at uh, you know, 28005 liquid tripe products that are blended with 32 with thiosol. Um, we like that ratio because the two work together uh, for good green plants, uh, that chlorophyll production. So um, these two things are kind of tied together, points one and two. Um, we do get a lot of sulfur. Uh, some of you, sulfur may be, may be a new idea. Maybe you've never had to put sulfur on, and there's very good reasons why. Um, if you have a higher organic matter, um, we get a lot of release from organic matter. So uh, those of you on heavier, higher organic matter soils, maybe you haven't ever heard of sulfur. Maybe that's a new idea that you're just implementing. Uh, for those of us that have been in the sand, uh, the 1% organic matter soils, we've had to apply a lot of sulfur, and we've done that for many years. Um, you know, there's been 40 years of sulfur applications in areas. So uh, another reason is sometimes you get it in your irrigation water. Um, it's very important to know what's in your well water. Uh, sometimes we pump a lot of uh, sulfur through our water. Um, and then we used to get a lot of it from our rainfall. Um, talk a lot about acid rain. That's something some of us learned about back in elementary school. Um, some of you weren't even born when we talked about that. But uh, the reality is uh, we've cleaned up the uh, emissions from coal plants. Um, we don't get it in the rainfall like we used to. And we've actually got some pretty good charts showing the decrease of atmospheric sulfur uh, soil sulfur uh, in areas around those uh, coal burning plants. So uh, that doesn't really exist anymore and that's why we're seeing some of the uh, issues. Also, as we push into higher yield plateaus, uh, sulfur becomes more important. Whereas the soil may have provided enough for 200, 220 bushel corn, now we push up to 250, 300 uh, additional sulfur may be needed. Um, one key point about sulfur is we do not want to over apply. We mentioned number one, it's very mobile, it will leach. Um, but number two, it's very acidifying to our soil, twice as acidifying as a, a pound of N. So uh, high sulfur applications, if not needed, can drive down soil pH. Uh, good if you're in a high pH situation, not so good if you're, if you're trying to maintain pHs. So be aware of that. And then most importantly, understand your soil source and timing. Uh, you take a, a dry sulfur, um, a 90% sulfur per se, you can put that out in the fall and you've got a very slow release, uh, very slow to become available. Um, so if that's when you're applying, that's a good idea versus a very mobile form, available form such as AMS or, or uh, thiosol. Uh, so know your source. If you're doing a fertigation or timing in season, then we want that available form. So we want to look at uh, that UAN uh, sulfur mix or, or AMS that's readily available, uh, gets in that plant quick. Uh, final point, soybeans. Uh, soybeans use a lot of sulfur. It's often overlooked. Uh, lots of studies showing the response to sulfur on soybeans. Uh, we've been doing a lot of work with that for many years, but higher producing soybeans require a lot of sulfur, so don't forget that in your, uh, in your program. A lot of times we forget that because we rely on the nitrate fixation of the soybeans to provide the nitrogen, uh, so we don't think about the sulfur. So just a few tips on sulfur. I uh, look forward to talking to you next week.